primary speech. My speech is part of elevation ensures and promotes the human rights of people of all ethnic groups in Xinjiang. It's my great honor to be part of this conference. To keep things off, I would like to go case to a set of images that encompassing the evaluation of my hometown across different historical areas. The initial set of pictures featured feature the old city of Shachu County, with my rural slides, good slides, born and raised here. I departed in 2003 at the age of 20. Consequently, my deep understanding of the local people and their way of life becomes evident through these images. The snapshots vividly depict the transformative journey since the peaceful liberation of Xinjiang, showcasing significant changes in the city, state, and living condition of its resident, residents. <coughs> Moving on to the second set, we explore the old city of Kashgar. I recall my first visit in 2002, perceiving Kashgar as a bustling metropolis. However, after leaving Fort Urumqi and Shanghai in 2003, I gained a newfound appreciation for the dynamism and allure of modern city, realizing the rare, relatively slower pace of development in my hometown. Images provide offers and glimpses into the evolving landscape of both Kashgar's old city and the city itself. This visual also in underscores improved living standards and enhanced quality of life for people of all ethnicity in Xinjiang. The proactive efforts of the Chinese government, including elevation income levels and implementing Reports for the elevation initiatives have promoted and protected the human rights of all ethnic ethnicity in Xinjiang, leading to historic peak in living condition. In 1978, the Chinese government conducted a survey on rural poverty, revealing that by the standard of the era, approximately over 5 million individuals in Xinjiang's rural areas were living in poverty. Fast forward to 2020, 2010, there was a notable reduction with the number of impoverished individuals in Xinjiang, decreased to 2,049,000. In 2011, responding, on, responding to an update national port standard, Xinjiang expanded its poverty elevation efforts, encompassing an additional 800,000 people and bring the overall count of deaths in poverty to 3 million 29,000. By the close of 2017, the poverty stricken population in Xinjiang had further declined to 1 million 89,000. Xinjiang completely eradicated poverty in 2020, lifting all its residents out of impoverished conditions. During this period, both the central government and the autonomous region constantly has great financial support for poverty elevation, changing sustainable resources to uplift Xinjiang as a whole, with a particular emphasis on southern Xinjiang. To illustrate between 2010 and 2014, the regional fiscal special poverty elevation fund exceeds 11 billion yuan. In 2020, Xinjiang allocated a staggering 42 billion yuan across virus for the elevation initiatives with 19 billion yuan specially embarked for target poverty elevation. By October 2023, an additional investment of 21 billion yuan was injected into Xinjiang, aimed at consolidate and expanded the riders made in poverty elevation and seamlessly integrate them with the rural revitalization efforts. As the trajectory of port elevation unfolds unfold 
Anfang des Monats. Dann kam Lauris auf, und als ich vor sieben Jahren habe, witnessed a remarkable ascent. To put it in perspective, the per capita disposable income for urban and rural residents in Xinjiang put at a mere 319 yuan and 190 yuan, respectively. In 1978, first forward to 2020, and those figures are projected to soar to 14,578 yuan and 17,948 yuan. Animation of income levels has Gradually, positive shifts in consumption patterns, structural preference, and education pursuits among the diverse ethnic groups in Xinjiang. For instance, 98, the per capita consumption expenditure for urban and rural residents was at 418 yuan and 140 By 2023, the figures are expected to reach 26,134 and 13,645 showcasing a sustainable increase of approximately 65 times and 90 times. Examining consumption structure levels at note worthy transformation. In 1985, the proportion of per capita expenditure on food, tobacco, and alcohol for urban and rural residents in Xinjiang accounts for 48.8% and 48.8% of the total per capita consumption expenditure. Contrastingly, by 2020, the percentage drops to 31.3% and 32.2%, indicating a should shift towards increasing increased spending on housing, health care, education, culture, transport, and communication has gradually increased. This trend highlights the elevation of pro properties beyond basic needs, emphasizing personal ex expression improving living conditions, enhanced health care, and broad, broader horizons through travel. For example, the per, per capacity housing area in rural Xinjiang expanded from 10.2 square meters in 1983 and 70.3 square meters in 2000 to an impressed 29.4 square meters in 2020. Similarly, the per capita living area in urban Xinjiang increased from 11.9 square in 1983 and 20 square meters in year of 2000 to a sustainable 36 square meters in 20. 2020. Educational opportunities have also flourished with the number of individuals pursuing higher education skyrocketing from 940,000 in 2000 and 2,300,000 in 2010 to an impress 4,200,000 in 2020. Furthermore, as more individuals rise out of poverty and attain affluence, attain, there is a growing emphasis on education, a considerable number now re receiving quality education, even the way for happier lives. For instance, in 1949, Xinjiang's illiteracy rate surpassed 90%, nearly 10% point higher 
Africa's national average. In 2022, this rate climbed to 2.6%, the lowest national average. The proportion of individuals obtaining higher education in Xinjiang surged from 5.1% in 2000 to 60.5% in 2020. Per 100,000 people, 16,536 had college degrees, 1,069 more than the national average. This educational advancement has translated into more stable jobs, increased incomes, and overall improvement in the quality of what happens. And it's my father, and it's my uh, mother. It's a totally different line in making finance the development of our society. Also, in 2021, when I was my home, the restaurant, we are regarded for family dinners. It shows uh, the development of the local society. It's uh, peaceful decoration and comfort and needs. And it's my wife, it's my child, it's my brother and well, And this house is my, uh, it's, this is a picture of my old family and house where my sister lives. The Chinese government prioritized the substantial and development rights of all ethnic groups as a primary basic human rights through power to innovation, including in Xinjiang. It has elevated the quality of life and happiness index for people across the nation. Improving living and working environments, the government effectively ensures the equal participation and development rights of all ethnic communities. Fostering sharing benefits and contributing significantly to the global human rights cause. As a Uyghur scholar actively involved in the grassroots for the elevation, I feel honored and gratified to contribute to building an all round well of society. I hope that Xing provides you with uh, inspire. And it's my picture I work in the Botan uh, Pond. We can find the road is very beautiful and the, um, the people in here are very happy. Okay, uh, that's all. Thank you for your hearing.